coming up all the way to welterweight. You know, if I land that fight, it'll be my first attempt at, at welterweight, and I'm going against the top guy there, against the, the best in the division. I'm prepared to take on that challenge. Like I said, I'm here to challenge myself, you know, and he is the best. He might feel that it's, you know, an easy fight for him when I'm too small. You know, well, that's that's fine. You know, let's, let's get in the ring and let's get to work. I'd like to ask Robert Garcia about that also. Robert, I know that you've had, uh, in past statements, had some misgivings about the prospect of Mikey going up to welterweight. Can you extend on that now that it seems though it's going to probably be a reality at the end of this year? Look, we've always uh, said that uh, we shouldn't move too fast and, and, and take that challenge right now because you know, we're doing great at, uh, at lightweight and even uh, junior welterweight, but uh, that's what Mikey wants. And, uh, we know that uh, he does have the skills here, he has the time to compete. You know, it's not going to be easy, and uh, Mikey said before, you know, he, he, got, you know, he, he loves his challenges, and uh, the, the, this will probably be the first fight that he's ever had where he's going to be the underdog, and I think that's what's going to motivate him even more. That's why he wants to say, thanks for I'm, I'm, you know, from now on, we're, we're, we're going to take a fight today. Just give it up for Robert Easter, he's leaving. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Was it just an exchange of punches where you guys were trading? No, we, we exchanged punches on several occasions. On one occasion, I remember he landed a good right hand to the head. He didn't hurt me, but he felt that he might have hurt me and he came on the attack, so I had to defend. I had to you know, be careful, I got to block. But I would come back. Um, you know, he's a fighter, he, he fights, and there was moments when we're in a fight. I mean, you, you are expected to get hit once in a while. Mikey, when you heard him that early in the fight, you had him down in the third round. Oh, yes. When you had him down in the third round, did you feel like you were going to finish him and be able to knock him out in the fight? No, not right away there. He, he got up. He wasn't completely hurt. You know, I I caught him with a good right hand and then that left hook that put him down. But he wasn't out. You know, I could see it in his eyes. I could see it in his body. You know, he was wide awake. It's not like he was, you know, to the point where I could finish him off. I tried to land a few other punches throughout the fight, and I think I might have hurt him with a body shot at one time. But it was towards the end of the round, and you know he, he was he was game. He survived. Then he focused more on, on just surviving and defending himself, and made it a little more complicated for me. Up until the 12th round, I was still landing some good shots, and I still tried to you know land some good good head shots in, in, in the last and final round. But you know, I, I, not a, I, I didn't feel enough damage was done to to try to put him out. Did you feel that he kind of went into survival mode in the second half of the fight? Uh, there's a few rounds where he did. I think he, he went a little more defensive. You know, I don't know if it, you want to call that survival mode. Maybe he was a little hurt from that body shot, or maybe he got a punch upstairs that might have hurt him. He, he's smart. He's a champion. He wanted to you know, survive, get his bearings again, and I mean, he made it to the 12th round. Mikey, talk about his job. Do you feel if he would have pop the jab more, it would have gave you more difficulty? Or were you, did you guys have that, that plan? I, I felt, coming to fight, I, I felt and we all thought, you know, he was gonna try to use that jab and use that reach. So we were prepared for that. Um, he really wasn't snapping it hard. He was just, you know, throwing it out there. So I had just had to wait for the right time, the right distance and range for me to be able to land. I landed some good jabs on him, you know, even though he had that reach. You know, I was able to time it perfectly and land a solid jab, and I think he respected that enough because he would move back. Do you see any similarities? You see, obviously, arrows of 147. He, he, do you see any similarities in the style between Easter? Look, uh, it's, I think it's a different fight. Um, Errol spins the southpaw. He, he bangs to the body a lot. It's, it's, a, it's a different fight. Um, this guy, Easter, was was fighting, trying to use that distance, but it's just a whole different fighter. Right here. Rob? Yeah. Uh, Robert, question for you uh, in the back here. Lomachenko is a, a top-ranked fighter. We know the history there with, with Mikey 
top rank. Uh, you've been doing a lot of those top rank shows recently. Have you had any conversations with the people there about kind of thawing those those problems and advancing towards you know Mikey and I don't check it out. Not with uh, not with Bob Arum or, or or Todd, but I do with with uh, a lot of other people that that work for top rank and. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gonna tell you the truth. You know, most of them tell me Mikey will be Lomachenko, and uh, and that's that's probably why the the, the fight that happens is gonna be whenever it's uh, it's so big where it has to happen. But as of now, that Mikey doesn't even consider changing that fight because we know that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Robert and Mikey, buenas noches. Muchas gracias por la gran actuación y esta pregunta va de parte de campeones y campeones del mundo que me pidieron que le hiciera. Dicen que no vayas por Space, muchos campeones y campeones, que vayas por Lomachenko porque definitivamente ganándole a él merece ser el número uno libra por libra. La pregunta es para los dos, por favor. Mira, yo, yo pienso que es la pelea en ligero que será la más grande, una pelea contra Lomachenko, pero siendo realistas con las promociones y las diferencias de, de canal y todo, se complica mucho. Si él está dispuesto a, a pelear conmigo, que yo sé que él sí está dispuesto, tiene que pedírselo a, a, a su promotor, a Top Rank, que nos hable y nos sentaremos a platicar y discutir esa posibilidad. A mí me encantaría una pelea con él. Mike y Robert. Perdón, eh, Robert, si puedes contestar otra pregunta, por favor. Sí, exactamente, como lo comenté hace rato, eh, mira, pelearle a los machanos fuera lo ideal, fuera lo mejor, la, lo, lo que yo prefiero hacer, porque sé que es una, una pelea grandísima, eh, especialmente en peso liguero, es, no es un pelador grande como lo va a decir los fans, pero, pero la realidad es que no se va a hacer, no se va a hacer, es, menos ahorita, ahorita la, la que sigue no se va a hacer, así que tendremos que seguirlo esperando quizá un año, un año y medio más, y, y, y mientras que vamos a hacer, no, claro. no hay nada más en ligero para Mikey, así que lo más posible es que va, vamos buscando otros retos más grandes y un día, si de aquí a un año, un año y medio, dos años, es la pelea suficientemente grande para hacerla, entonces va a ser, pero en estos momentos no creo que sea. Mikey, finalmente, ¿qué le dice a todo el pueblo mexicano, la raza que literalmente atiborró el State por Center, la verdad que te, te apoyaron mucho, ¿qué le dice a la raza? Me, me recibieron muy bonito, me da mucho, mucho gusto que me hayan venido a apoyar. Estoy muy contento con, con ese recibimiento. Este, muy feliz de estar de regreso aquí y pues en verdad quedé admirado. Me, me brindan de, pues de, de emoción en verdad cuando estoy saliendo y que miro todo el público. Ese es un sentimiento muy especial. Les doy muchas gracias a todos por, por ese apoyo. Una Mike para los dos. Eh, volviendo a la pelea esta noche. Eh, mi puntuación fue 107 a 120, no vi ganar un solo round a, a Robert, Mr. Jr. Pero no te faltó un poquito, porque él no presentó pelea, él no hizo nada por ganar. Tú, tú forzaste la pelea del principio, fuiste para adelante, pero no te faltó tirar más al cuerpo. Había ocasiones donde se presentaba, quizás una oportunidad, pero para poder trabajar bien al cuerpo necesitaba yo que él se parara a, a medio ring. Cuando estaba moviéndose... Era, es más difícil cuando se mueve y aunque lo llevé a las cuerdas en ocasiones se, se movía y se quitaba entonces no hubo tanta tanta posibilidad en una ocasión sí le pegué un buen gancho al hígado que parece que lo castigó un poquito pero fue al final del round y sobrevivió y después ya menos se pararon yo, yo, yo pienso que hizo una pelea en realidad Risto Junior hizo una pelea inteligente una pelea difícil supo usar mucho su alcance no, no, fue, no fue fácil se nos dificultó porque eh, 5 pulgadas de, de estatura y 8 de alcance, o sea, tu, tuvieron un buen plan en realidad, su entrenador, su equipo, supieron hacer un, un buen trabajo, no pudieron, hacer, obviamente no pudieron vencer a Mikey, pero sí tenían un muy buen plan de pelea. Una más, esta me dice, lo decía yo a Mikey hace dos días, ¿no te recuerdo un poquito la pelea que tuviste tú con Chico Corrales por la diferencia de estatura? No, para mí Chico me mintió. <risa> y la otra, la otra es, ¿esta pelea le puede servir en caso de enfrente a Robert Spence por ejemplo, la estatura que tiene? Eh, pues bien, es, es zurdo de los pens y, y en realidad no es, no es igual de alto que, que Easter, así que en realidad no tiene yo creo, nada de parecido a la pelea. No.
Richard, hold on there, Dylan. I'm not sure if this is for Mike or maybe Richard. Um, when you guys look ahead to a fight with Spence, um, are you guys looking at pay per view in Vegas, or if not, what are maybe some of the other options? Well, it definitely is a pay per view fight. I mean, it's one of the biggest fights you can make. Uh, it's like a dream matchup, uh, almost like almost too good to be true. Uh, so uh, you know, definitely pay per view. And uh, I do like to, I think, for pay-per-view, Las Vegas is the perfect place. But I do believe with this huge turnout Mikey had tonight here, uh, as I mentioned, it was slightly bigger than what we had for Mars and Santa Cruz. But for Mikey to come back here after seven years, uh, I mentioned it before, Los Angeles has Staples Center, has its sports franchise here after the Lakers, the Clippers, and the Kings, they have the Garcias now. Mikey Garcia, and I think, uh, this is building here is, is going to see much more of my people seeing. Richard, from a promoter standpoint, what's the next step and how fast does that happen? Well, like Mikey, Mikey, Mikey is his own boss, so Mikey will be calling the shots. And uh, I think uh, the good foundation is that Mikey and Errol Spence both seem to want to have the fight. They both have the same uh, advisor. So, um, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll see how quickly can be put together. But usually when two fighters want to fight, Two fighters who are in control of their own destiny, um, you know, it's relatively easy to get stopped up. Uh, Mike, uh, over here. Um, you know, in the first couple of rounds, you know, Robert got his punches in, jabs to the body, but in the second and third round, you start to look a little, little more comfortable, and once you got the knockdown, uh, starting the fourth round, you kind of look a little more lively, had a more, more spring in your step. Did that knockdown kind of help alleviate your a little bit of the pressure when it comes to fighting Robert? I, I like to be patient early on in my, my fights anyways. First couple of rounds, I'm feeling my opponent, you know, finding that distance, that range, feeling his speed, his power. So it was just a matter of time before I started to get on the, get on the tag, get, get my rhythm going. Just so happens that I, I knocked him down in that third round. But, you know, I, I started getting that rhythm going and after I noticed that I could hurt him, and I, I felt that I was starting to take control. Of him. You know, that, that was it. There, there was no turning back, no walking back. You know, lastly, obviously, you want to fight Errol Spence all, all, all the way at 147, and winning that title would give you a world title and fight different weight class. And what does that mean for you, legacy-wise, to join? in extremely elite and exclusive class of winning a fighters, winning a world title in five different weight classes. Well, that's why I'm trying to get that because there's only a select few and only the greats, you know, have accomplished that feat. I'm here in search of that, you know, and I'm not just trying to pick up a bell against nobody, against someone that just happens to be a champ. I'm going against the best. I'm trying to get the best fighter, the most, you know, you know, dangerous man at, at welterweight, you know, I'm trying to get that because that's what I think will, you know, cement my name and, and put that, you know, stamp of approval here for everybody. There's, no one else will be doing that. No one else is doing that right now. There's no other fighter on, uh, on this planet doing what I'm doing. It's as I said, dare to be great. Dare to be great. Very right few do that. Uh, Richard, you know, you said it's one of the biggest fights that could be made. How many interview bodies do you expect this could generate? I know you Broken down the numbers many times by now, I'm sure. I love to do pay per views. So I'm usually pretty accurate with my, uh, you know, with my estimation. So I think this is going to be a big, big, big pay per view. And I'm not going to tell you how many yet, but you know, I always promote pay per views. I want to break records, and uh, you know, so we're going to do a big number. Uh, question for Robert and Mike. You know, we've seen fighters in the past like Roy Jones Jr. and Art Hopkins utilize a. Uh, Conditioning guru like Matthew Schulstone when they go up for a high profile fight at a greater weight. Would you bring in someone like that? Like that? Not him in particular, but just some kind of like strict conditioning guru? You know, it's, it's kind of uh, different the way the way things work, with, 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 especially with Mikey. You know, I said uh, to a few people before. You know, this is like one of the first training camps that, that Mikey starts doing setups. You know, maybe that's the start. <laughs> maybe that's the start to, to get himself to a watch away. You know, he you know hardly ever does setups or pull ups or push ups or none of that stuff. He does his running. He runs very hard. And when we're in the gym, we do a lot of rounds of sparring. That's pretty much what uh, you know what our training camp is about. 
you know, the uh, the rest is uh, something that uh, we've never really used with Mikey. So it uh, it'd be something that we know moving up to to one to it's something that we would probably consider and then maybe talk about before make, making that making before I make a decision it'll be between me, Mikey, my father, and the rest of the team. See see what we decide to do. Well, I, mean, I don't do a whole lot of physical training like that, but I think we'll have to use a little more and implement some different exercises because I am going to be moving up all the way to welterweight. So I, I think what the main thing would be the diet, change the, the way we eat, and uh, maybe I'm doing a little, a little more you know, physical core training for them. But also, I mean, obviously you're a great boxer. Uh, Spence is like a, a big 47 who can even fight a 54. Like, how much muscle would you have to possibly add on to just deal with his strength and power? And there's other things that I can try to use. You know, I can try to use speed. I can try to use angle. I mean, footwork. There's a lot of things that, that I can, you know, use to overcome that that height, that reach, the southpaw, the, the strength, and all that. Um, I'm prepared to do whatever it takes, you know, to to compete and and win that fight as well. Uh, Mikey, uh, when Spence visited us at ringside, he said he wants to do this fight this year. He mentioned November. That might be a pretty quick turnaround. Uh, are you willing to do it as early as November? Well, I, I said I wanted to do before the end of the year. November's before the end of the year. Um, I was thinking, you know, November, December. Um, you know, it's not too far off. You know, if we land on a date that we can you know, compromise there. I think we can have a good training camp, enough time. That's all that it takes. You know, we set a, a date that allows both of us to train, you know, well for it. I have no problem. Mikey, uh, just a quick question. Um, you mentioned that you He, he kept uh, bending to, towards his right, so my right hand would actually come down and, and land a couple times. Um, it was hard for me to land it when he was standing straight up. Sometimes I'd miss, but um, it's just the timing. I had to figure out the right time for me to let go of that right hand. That left hook that dropped him came after a right hand. You know, as he was pulling back, I caught him with the left hook. Um, on other occasions, you know, I landed a good left hook. I mean, we were ready to do whatever it takes, you know, and, and we practiced a lot in the gym, and, you know, we knew it was just about getting that right distance, that right range, so that I couldn't let go of my hand. Uh, Mikey, you know, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, you have a face fighter that big, but Spence also, to this point, has only faced really, like, Kel Brook, right, as far as, like, a world class fighter. He hasn't faced a boxer like you, and I know you keep saying that you've seen something in his game. Um, do you think that he'd be in for a surprise as far as your boxing ability and angles and footwork and those sort of things? You know, he's, he's a terrific fighter. He's an experienced fighter and you know he's very strong. You know he's a dangerous man. So I don't know if, if I can surprise him. I think you know he's he's got the experience. He knows you know the kind of fighter I am. But I think what will surprise him is how well I can do other things. If you're standing on the outside. You know, everybody can just see a simple guy, just straight one, two. Nothing, nothing special about that. Ask any of my opponents what they feel after the fight. Is it easy? Was it like they expected? I think they'll all tell you it wasn't what they expected. Okay, Mikey, have you guys considered maybe uh, when the fight gets made, having some sort of stipulation where the Spence can't go over a certain weight, like rehydrating? I don't know if you thought about that. Uh, I, I think the IBF has its own regulations and laws on that, so I got nothing to ask. I ain't asking for no catch review either. Robert, would, would, would a um, tune-up at 147 make you more comfortable heading into a Spence fight? I, I know Mikey has a controversy for it, but would that make you more comfortable? You know, whatever we say is not going to change Mikey's mind and idea, you know, fighting a Spence, uh, so we're going to go for it. Uh, you know, we've talked to my dad, and my dad tells me earlier today, uh, after the fight in the locker room says, Contact Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> <laughs> My dad would rather go after Manny Pacquiao. He's a WBA champion, and, uh, but that it just doesn't interest Mikey. I think we're gonna go straight into uh, Aerosmith. Mikey, uh, would you want that fight in San Antonio, or would you want that fight in Dallas or in Los Angeles? 
I think we we already started talking about that. I think that fight belongs in Vegas. You know, a, a big fight like that. I think uh, belongs in Vegas. It just you know it's a huge attraction, big fight. You know, and I don't think that there's any other better venue for it. Mike, you, what do you rate your performance? I know you haven't had a chance to watch tape, but what did you rate your performance? On? I think I did very well. You know, I think I, I overcame the height and reach. You know, I, I did well. I, I hardly got hit. You know, a couple of jabs, but you know, we were boxing. But overall, I didn't get hit with solid punches. I wasn't hurt, and I hurt my opponent several times. Body shots upstairs, I dropped them. I mean, I don't think I, I could have done much more. Um, you know, if, if I had stopped watching that would have been probably a better ending to the fight, but, um, you know, you saw me 12 rounds, you saw me adjust, you saw me use my, my, my feet at times, you saw me fight on the outside, you saw me fight on the inside. I, I think I did, you know, great. It was a masterful performance, and uh, please give it up for Mikey Garcia and all the <laughs>